Hey everybody, it's Mark Vogt with Voteland Outdoors. It's 3.30 in the morning on April 8th. And we are headed, or I am headed, to Trafalgar, 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 Indiana, just south of Indianapolis to go and watch the total eclipse of the sun today. And that is all we're taking. One decent digital SLR camera in there, one little backup camera, one tripod, a whole bunch of batteries, a whole bunch of micro SD cards, some lenses, some filter lenses for filtering out, uh, for being able to, to look directly at the sun, some clip-on lenses, and we got three hours and 45 minutes of driving to get down there, so let's get started. It's surprisingly clear out here in uh, North Aurora, Illinois, but I'm 200 and 50 miles away from where this is actually happening. I have to go to south of Indianapolis. Then the whole event happens on a southwest to northeast track where what looks like is the, the moon and the sun are chasing each other to the southwest across the sky. And eventually one of them overtakes the other and it takes a couple hours. They overtake each other and that's when the eclipse occurs and then they continue to pass. And now you know everything there is to know about an eclipse. Let's get... I just turned south to Indianapolis. I'm only about 20 miles away. And I just noticed, oddly enough, that it's kind of strange to look at that sun knowing that in about six hours, it's going to disappear. I don't know. Just the day seems kind of weird. Knowing that something like that's going to happen. I'm looking around to see if there's any other indications, any other little hints that there's something unusual about today, something truly unusual. So far, nothing. Let's keep driving. Seven miles that way is Trafalgar, Indiana. That way's east. Uh, it's still kind of sleepy around here. I don't know what I was expecting. Some kind of a caravan seven miles long. Uh, people coming and making the pilgrimage down this way to see the the eclipse in about uh, seven hours. But nothing. Everybody's just going to work. I'd have to say the sun feels a little weird though. It's, uh, it's almost an hour, yeah, it's an hour, hour after sunrise. And the, it still seems a little hazy out. Something is a little odd. But no pilgrimage. No long line of cars behind me. No long line of cars ahead of me. There's a whole lot of space to watch an eclipse here. I mean, you could be anywhere. But I'm headed to Trafalgar because right at the intersection, they are on ground zero. The dotted line that marks the total eclipse... They're within a mile of that line on the face of the earth. That's close. And there's a elementary school right there. Indian Creek, something like that. Seemed like a great place. If anybody's going to be going out watching a, a, an eclipse, it's going to be a bunch of, well, it's going to be at 3 o'clock right when they let out. So it's an after school thing. But hopefully it's going to be an event in Trafalgar. Let's go see. I'll say this about the terrain. The sky certainly looks absolutely gorgeous. And if really the sun and the moon are coming from the east, you know, appearing to come from the east, headed west towards the sunset, and one overtakes the other, there's your eclipse. Um, to the east, it looks fantastic. Where the weather is to the west, I'd have to say it still looks like it's going to be a clear day. I, hard to say, but it's off to a good start. Off to a good start glad I came. Okay, here we are at Trafalgar, Indiana. In a quarter mile, turn left onto West Pearl Street. And I'd have to say there is absolutely nothing going on here. No influx of people. <laughs> if I hadn't done my research, nice boats, if I hadn't done my research that this is a good spot, West Pearl Street. I'd be second guessing whether or not I'm in the right place. Because it is dead. 
The only reason I wanted to come here is because I think they had a... Uh, in a quarter got, mile, turn left onto West State Road 252. They got a McDonald's here somewhere, and I'm really hungry. So at least I'll keep busy all day. And they got a Taco Bell. And they got a CVS. Let's just go through town here and see what they... Oh, there's At the McDonald's. light, turn left onto West State Road 252. Civilization. Dairy Queen, even. And there's the elementary school. That's where I think I'm going to actually watch all this. I mean, I'm at a loss. Total Eclipse in the park. Continue okay. on West State Road 252 for so half a mile. So they are thinking there's something going on. Let's hang out with the natives. There's absolutely nothing to do and nowhere to go here in Trafalgar, Indiana. Pop it's a blink twice and you miss it down. Nice people. I, I'm going to go into the McDonald's here and hang out on my laptop. See ya. Hmm. Well, I just got done making fun of Trafalgar's water tower and saying population five. But the honest God truth is, I got to kill a couple of hours. And I drove past what I thought was a church and it turns out to be the Trafalgar Public Library. And it is absolutely gorgeous. What a pretty place. Let's go inside. Morning. Morning. No such luck. I walk up to the doors and they say all JCPL locations will be closed on April 8th. Enjoy the eclipse. Can't hardly even get mad at him about it. I think I'm just going to hang out in the parking lot because chances are they still got Wi-Fi and that's what I need. Access to Wi-Fi. In fact... I thought I could find some place in the shade. This is the perfect place to spend some time. Over at that picnic table. Let's go give it a try. Okay, I'm planning where I'm going to be. And right now, I am in Trafalgar, Indiana, right here. I am literally at in the parking lot of their public library, very cool place, so that if I go down here a half a mile, and then go up here two miles, and over here one mile, I'm going to be on a little county road right off of a corner called Bud, I think it is. I'm going to literally be here, and the distance that you see right there is about a hundred yards. I am a hundred yards from being dead center under the total eclipse on the face of the earth. Can't get any closer than that without actually being on a public road. And then they usually shoo you off. So that's always a bad idea. But this little stretch, stretch of road right there, guys, that's where I'm going to be. Yeah, baby. But now I got to kill a couple hours. I keep saying that, but what else do you do? There's just a whole lot of waiting. Sometimes you make adjustments. It's noon. We got about two hours before the partial eclipse starts. And I told you guys an hour ago that I was over at the Traf Trafalgar Public Library. Well, now there's people coming in from Kentucky that are showing up in the parking lot. Came over and asked me if it was okay. I said, yeah, it's okay with me. <laughs> because I came 200 plus miles too. They're like, well, okay, it looks like a nice place. So this is where we're going to be. This is where it's all going to happen. In about two hours, we're going to start seeing some weird stuff show up. Three hours. But sometimes you just want to kind of be near other people too. And something's going to happen that about one, about, yeah, how am I going to do this? About, that's about one hour, two hours, somewhere right around there is where it's going to start happening. Should be a nice place. Weather is absolutely gorgeous. 
you could see the sky is blue enough. The haze seems to be about plus 10, 15 degrees off the horizon only. And then it's all deep blue all the way around here. So that's not going to be a problem. Cool. Thirty minutes until the partial eclipse starts, and I'm trying out my Fuji Fuji Fine Picks HS20 EXR. This is like a six hundred dollar camera ten years ago, sixteen megapixels. <clears throat> More importantly, thirty x optical zoom, so it's still valid even in a, this day and age because that thirty x optical zoom makes all the difference on how to use those sixteen megapixels. I scored this for only 80 bucks a couple of days on Facebook Marketplace. Wow. And uh, let me show you guys this. I took a couple of sample pictures just now of the sun, learning how to zoom in with the manual settings. And there's one sample of a disc. Now I got to zoom in. And then move it over. Hey, hey. Oh, my hand's in front of that. When you when you cover up this uh, eye thing, it goes to viewfinder mode automatically. So you got to stay away from that. Well, those are my manual settings right now. F260th uh, of a second. Uh, ISO 100. And you can actually see sunspots on the sun. This is at full brightness. That's not the nerve-wracking part. The nerve-wracking part is when the eclipse actually starts, the full eclipse, the totality. And then you got to take the filter off and you have like less than five minutes. But that actually looks kind of cool. That's with the filter on. So I'm kind of excited. Hope I don't mess it all up. At the same time, I'm going to be running my cell phone over there, running something called Sun Sketcher. So it's just going to be pointing up at the sun, and then you just leave it alone and hope that that works out. And I've got another camera here that I was going to run, but I don't know how I'm going to run it. It's Sometimes you just got to focus on only the one camera and get it right. But those, those look really good. I'm excited. If I'm fast enough, I'm going to be able to catch the Corona. 30 minutes before it all begins. Okay, it started in per usual. I had some kind of a pooch screw. It was too hard to try to hold that filter on top of my lens, so I thought I'm going to tape the whole big cardboardy piece of it on my lens, but then it screwed up the autofocus that's on this side. So then I wasn't getting, I was getting blurry pictures. I had to tear everything off. And then, and then tape only the lens part onto the lens. And then I started getting pictures that looked like this. Why is it not showing these? Too much there. That's not bad, guys. You'll see better soon. In case you guys are curious what my whole rig looks like, it's an $80 Fujicam digital camera, 16 megapixel, more importantly, 30x telephoto, optical telephoto lens. That makes all the difference. Take a $700 camera that's 10 years old, 16 megapixels and 30x telephoto, 30x optical uh, zoom, and it's still a very usable camera for something like this. But that's it, and the sun is up there. We've already started seeing some pictures against the sky. It's a, a thumbnail. Like, like that much of it is getting covered right now by the sun. A couple other people in the parking lot. Generally, nothing's going on sky-wise. No effect yet. That's not going to happen until until nearly total eclipse. That's what happened the last time. But so far, so good. 2.48 p.m. Totality starts at 3.04. So we got about, what, six minutes 
and I know that the video on here is got automatic HDR so you're probably compensating but it looks different here right now the sky the light looks different it's noticeable very interesting I'm looking up at the sky waiting to see what's gonna happen it's about 250 getting ready to take the next set of pictures I've never been able to figure out how to disable the, the HDR on this Galaxy S21 though so you guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing you're seeing compensated video but it it looks different Thirty minutes before total. This is on manual, so this should be authentic. This tiny little silver left. We're at about ninety percent right now, guys. The show is about to start in about four minutes. I wish you guys could see this, how it looks. It is easily. It's dark. But it's, it's not like there's a sun, there's not a sunset or a sunrise that's off on a horizon somewhere. It's just everything got dark. That's what's so cool. There it is, the coolest nebula out there. I have no idea if this is showing up, but I got a bunch of good pictures. But look around. It looks like 10 minutes after, like a half an hour after sunset. The lights came on. Gotta go back to taking pictures. 
and just as soon as it started, I mean, you got four minutes, that is it. But it was an awesome four minutes. We saw little red dots on the bottom at about seven o'clock and about what, five o'clock, maybe even three o'clock. I think I got them with this camera, but even that Fuji's autofocus started to disappoint. It got confused after a while. I had to zoom out and then zoom back in and then it seemed to recover. I think I got some really good pictures though. I'm very, very pleased. If the, if the display on the back was in, indicative of all at all about what I just captured, but it, it is over so fast. It goes from the sky being black with this ring up there that doesn't even, it seems unbelievable, this ring around the, around the sun. And then all of a sudden, the sun comes back out, bam, on the other side, and it goes back to being daylight. Wow. Wow. And I'm taking pictures over there too. And they got pictures on here. So I did the best I could. I'm pretty pleased. Gosh, I'm hoping some of those turned out. Gosh. I'm going to go and hole up at uh, the local McDonald's down the road here. Dump all uh, the film into the laptop and see what I got. Well, here it is, 3.10. And <coughs> it's only five minutes afterwards. I mean, when it's over, it's over. It's like, quick! It's like a 4th of July fireworks. When it's over, it almost immediately, within the first minute of the sun showing up on the other side of the moon's disk, it goes back to almost being 99% as bright, 90% as bright. But I think I got some really good pictures. Oh, I'm, I'm just hoping so. I got to head over to the local McDonald's and dump what I got out of that little Fuji camera. But let's see, just maybe, just maybe what I got. Here, you guys can take a peek with me. We're going to go to display mode. That's what I got on the end, on the back end. But let's go see. Oops. Let's go see, uh, what we got before that. That's not it. Look at that. Wow. Mark did that. Dang. What else have we got? Sometimes it got confused, but see that little red dot? Wow. All right, that's just when it was starting to wink out and I got that too. Winking out, total, right there. It looks better, but uh, my my phone's autofocus can't focus on this display very well. And then I started to lose it. Then I was heartbroken. Then I figured out a little technique to get the focus back. And I started getting, look at that interesting stuff at six o'clock. And then I got those little red dots. Pretty clear. Gotta go look at them. This is the alternate road, not Interstate 65. This is the alternate road everybody is taking to try to get home because of all the crashes on 65, trying to get home from the eclipse. Time to grab some Gatorade and take a nap. There's no going anywhere here for hours. Yikes. Oh God. 12.35 a.m. Tuesday.
I left at 3.30. That's nine hours to get home because of all the crashes on Interstate 65. Hi. I'm beat. I'm going to go hug my wife. Freckles.